being asked about my healthy, shiny hair, I am thrilled to share my beauty secret with you. It's feminism. When used regularly, feminism has been known to produce amazing results, such as a woman's right to vote, a woman's right to her own body, a woman's right to become a kick-ass athlete, the Violence Against Women Act, the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Restoration Act, and more. Feminism is meant to be used on a daily basis and works best when shared. But what if I don't need feminism? Trust me, girl, you do. <sighs> Side effects. Shut the fuck up. I will fucking laser you with alien fucking eyes and explode your fucking head. Say to the leader of the opposition, I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. I will Order. not be lectured about sexism Order. and misogyny by this man. Not now, not ever. The leader of the opposition says that people who hold sexist views and who are misogynists are not appropriate for high office. Well, I hope the Leader of the Opposition has got a piece of paper and he is writing out his resignation. Because if he wants to know what misogyny looks like in modern Australia, he doesn't need a motion in the House of Representatives. He needs a mirror. That's what he needs. I was very personally offended on behalf of the women of Australia. I was offended too by the sexism, by the misogyny of the Leader of the Opposition, misogyny, sexism. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. the Leader of the Opposition should be ashamed of is yeah, his yeah. performance in this parliament and the sexism he brings with it. I am offended by their content. I am offended by their content because I am always offended by sexism. I am offended by their content because I am always offended by statements that are anti-women. I am offended by those things in the same way that I have been offended by things that the Leader of the Opposition has said and no doubt uh, will continue to say in the future, because if this today was an exhibition of his new feminine side, well, I don't think we've got much to look forward to in terms of change conduct. Now looking at his watch, because apparently a woman's spoken too long, I've had him yell at me to shut up in the past. A few moments later. Tony Abbott is now more popular as leader among women voters than Julia Gillard. The surprise result is revealed in an exclusive Seven News Reachtel poll just months after the Prime Minister labelled the opposition leader a misogynist. Seen as a rallying cry to women voters, and at first it seemed to work. A Nielsen poll a fortnight later showed a spike in support for Julia Gillard among women, 53% to Tony Abbott's 38, and leading 48-42 among men. But the Seven News Reach Tell poll taken last weekend shows that trend has now reversed. Tony Abbott now leads among women voters 52-48 and is way ahead 62-38 among men. Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard has been defeated by Kevin Rudd. The long and bitter rivalry between the two politicians might now come to an end, as the former Prime Minister has said she will leave politics. Right, Philip, um, an application about International Men's Day. Yes, in, indeed, Mr Chairman. My, my, uh, my pitch is a, is a fairly straightforward one uh, in the sense that uh, every year since I can remember, certainly since I've been a member of this House, uh, which is uh, ten years now, uh, we've had an, uh, an annual debate and, and uh, in the last few years uh, this committee has granted one. In fact, I think I was on the committee uh, when it did grant um, the debate for International Women's Day. Uh, and, and that's been held every single year. And so I thought that in the spirit of gender equality, it would only be right uh, to, uh, to have a debate to commemorate International Men's Day, which conveniently, conveniently falls on uh, Thursday the 19th of November, which uh, is a date when you, you may or may not have some time to allocate, uh, so it will be very fitting. Um, because, of course, not only do, um, do we have International Women's Day, we also have women and equality questions every month in the Chamber, which we don't have for men. So the opportunity for men to raise issues that are important to them is very limited. And just to give you a flavour, Mr Chairman, of the type of things that may, may come up and which will be part of International Men's Day, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it's so humorous, but to discuss issues such as 
men's shorter life expectancy, uh, wider male uh, health issues, many of which go uh, unreported be through embarrassment of, of men to sort of go along and talk about these things, uh, the high uh, suicide rate amongst men, the uh, propensity for violence against men, there's many male victims of domestic violence, again, as something that goes very much unreported because of lots of embarrassment about it, the underachievement of boys in education compared to uh, girls, uh, the issues around father-child relationships and, and often the, um, the, the way that uh, fathers sometimes feel they don't get a fair crack of the whip in terms of custody of ch their children and things like that. These are all issues that affect an awful lot of people around the country, uh, whether people agree with, with some people's views or, or not. I, I think it's important that um, the House of Commons debates these issues. I think people can recognise that they are all very real issues for many people in the country. And so in the spirit of gender equality, given that we have the debate each year on International Women's Day, which I suspect will continue under this uh, committee, I thought it would only be fair that we had an opportunity to debate these issues uh, under the flag of International Men's Day, which is this year on Thursday the 19th of November. Thank you very much. Questions? Jess? Uh, you have to excuse me for laughing that the idea that men don't have the opportunity to ask questions in this place is a frankly laughable thing, as I say, as this, as the only woman on this committee. Guys, this is bullshit. It seems like every day to me is Well, I wasn't, I wasn't, make, with respect, I wasn't making that point. I wasn't no, making the point that men I... don't have an opportunity to ask. I was about men's issues. <laughs> There's a very big difference between but, men raising issues and the raising of men's issues. But one could raise men's issues in any single one of the question sessions. So your, your men's health, absolutely. So prostate cancer, that could be raised in men's questions, couldn't it? Well, that could be I very much, in I, 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 Mr. Chairman, I very much look forward to these arguments being deployed when we come to consider a debate on International Women's Day, because exactly the same arguments could be raised for International Women's Day, that women's health issues, that equality issues could be raised in women and equality questions in other forms. So, uh, it, I, all I ask is for uh, an equal crack of the whip, that if, the, if those issues can be raised in, without having a debate on International Men's Day, then obviously Though the same issues can apply for when it comes to International Women's Day, but those arguments have never won the day before this committee. I, I you were saying it was laughable. Do you regret saying that now? Was that the right reaction to burst out laughing? The thing that I said was laughable. I stand by, you know, the idea that men can't raise issues in Parliament and that male parliamentarians don't have enough opportunities is obviously ridiculous when so many more men are in Parliament. I, I think that what never gets played in this clip over the weekend is the bit where I ask for a point of order to s explicitly state that I do care about the issues that men face. Right. I mean, don't you have enough Guys, opportunity, Philip Davis? I mean, you only have to look at the numbers. Jess Phillips said there she was the only woman on that might committee. Say I'm sorry. Mm. Well, there's a difference this between is, how many men there are in Parliament and the debate about men's issues, which, are, which aren't just of interest to men. Lots of women are concerned by men's is issues, as Jess as uh, just, just indicated. Uh, and, and if you think of the issues that I raised about the high suicide, suicide rate amongst men, the low of achievement of boys in schools, the health problems that don't get reported like testicular cancer, the underreporting of male domestic violence, the problem many fathers have in getting access Will to the children. Will you be going to DWP these, questions well, hold, to raise hold, people who commit on, suicide hold, through hold, sanctions, hold largely hold, men? Hold, hold on Just a second. today, Jess, there's an opportunity. Jess, uh, you've had your say. I didn't interrupt you in what you had to say. All of those things, if you, if you actually look in Parliament, they very, very rarely get debated and they are real issues. Now, if Jesse's saying that these issues can be debated at other times and raised at other times, this, this exactly the same thing applies to issues around International Women's Day, that we have a monthly questions of women and equality questions in Parliament, which we don't have for, for men. So if Jesse's going to say to people who come next year to say, actually, we want to debate on International Women's Day, and if she's going to say, well, you don't need one because there's plenty of other opportunities to raise these issues, then that would be entirely consistent. Right. But well, what let's... wouldn't be is if you should support International Women's Day debate, but deprive one for International Men's Day. Okay. Oh. Cancer! 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 Cancer!